decided to stretch the police limit of 5,000 as St Mirren came to visit. Son our boss Alex McInespie has adopted the Graham Souness Alan McCoy's relationship with Derek Cook by relegating his top scorer to the bench. And local hero Barney Duffy, once a St Mirren player, was nursing a broken wrist, which meant that Barry Holland was again in goal. For St Mirren, Stevie Archibald was out with a fever, but Gunny Torfeson was back in from the cold after that horrendous cheekbone injury. Plastic surgery rescued his career, and it was clear that he was going to play a role of six million dollar man proportions in this tie for Saints. He hit the bar that time, but the Paisley fans were in the mood to head for one to celebrate after a goal, the execution of which was simplicity. Victor Shaw Torfeson, 1-0 Saints. It was a goal to soothe away all the distress of a string of Saturdays for St Mirren, and by half time they were two ahead. George Shaw was again chief engineer, but Paul Kinnear's finished was clinical. Tony Fitzpatrick was already breathing easier in the dugout. Into the second half, and St Mirren pressed the instant start button. They were 3-0 ahead within eight seconds of the restart. Kenny McDowell was the scorer, but the list of credits must include the Sonrad defence. This is Kenny's favourite distance, three yards. By now, though, it was becoming the Gooney Torfison show. His free kicks were causing the Sonrad back players' defensive wall-to-wall -wall heartache, although Holland did well to get flat out with this one. The Iceman was due a second goal, and you can always bank on money to lend a hand. McDowell did his bit, and Torfison showed his gratitude in the best possible way. St Mirren on the rampage. But Sonrar held on, or tried to, with all the tenacity of a pit bull terrier. Duncan George scored a fine goal, and at least there was something to celebrate. And I tell you, there could have been more. Was that a penalty? Referee Duncan blamed the shoulder. But Sonrar kept on pressing, and Campbell Money was suddenly a shade busy. Yet it was Saints who hit the accelerator pedal with some sweet play which showed the gap between the divisions. The boys from Love Street were an easy street, and they knew it, and they showed some one-touch stuff which was a delight to watch. Victor was in total control of proceedings. Black to Victor to Wishart onto Shaw and watch the build up to the best goal of the afternoon. A joy to watch in the afternoon is wrapped up with a strike from the Spaniard. Adios, Strenra. And Torfeson was ice cool about his red-hot performance. Yes, it was uh, a great victory for us. I mean, very important to, to get a fresh start, uh, especially after these injuries I've been having this season, so I'm very delighted. What did you think of coming down to a place like this at Strenra and the attitude of a second division team? Uh, this is my first time here in Stenra, so I knew nothing about them, but uh, I really enjoyed the, the day, so uh, as I said, I'm just delighted. Well, in today's other ties, ex-Banky Tommy Bryce scored his 11th goal of the season to take Air United through at Kilbowie. Two goals in a minute by Cowdenbeath John Wright and Graham Buckley ended the hopes of Highland League Cove Rangers, who had taken the lead. Rangers of Dunfermline against Cowdenbeath, East Fife and Dundee United against Airdrie, Motherwell against Partick Thistle or Falkirk, Dundee against Kilmarnock, Morton against Ross County or Queen of the South or Meadowbank Thistle, St Johnston or Berwick against Clyde or Hibbs, Celtic against St Mirren and Air United against Hamilton Academical. That's how the draw was made. We